Following the deaths of Eric Garner and Michael Brown, which involved white police officers, many people are calling for the federal government to get more involved. President Obama weighing in on race relations in a BET interview. It's important to recognize, as, as painful as these incidents are, and we can't equate what's happening now to what was happening 50 years ago. Uh, and if you talk to your parents, grandparents, uncles, they'll, they'll tell you that uh, you know, things are are better. Not good in some cases, but better. We're joined now by CNN senior political analyst and editorial director at the National Journal, Ron Brownstein and Errol Lewis, a CNN political commentator and political anchor at New York One News. Good to see both of you. All right, good to so, see you, my friend. Ron, you first. To what extent or how much further should the White House be involved? The White House got the Justice Department involved. Is that enough? Well, the president, I think, has had a very consistent and measured tone on issues like this uh, throughout his presidency. I mean, he has tried to strike a balance of, as you saw in that clip, saying things have improved certainly over the course of his life, but there are still challenges. Uh, and that, on, and, and on the kind of on the third piece of the agenda has been a very Clint, Bill Clinton-like effort to balance calls for opportunity and reform with calls for personal responsibility in the African American community. And that, I think, it's interesting watching this unfold. There is more polarization around these issues than there were, I think, even in the 90s. And it's been very hard for him to find stable ground to stand on because he's gotten, I think, more pushback. Uh, from black supporters than Bill Clinton did with similar messages, uh, and there is, I think, more. Uh, the, 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 it is more difficult to go in the other direction at a time of intense racial polarization in our voting. And so, Errol, you know, do you think, fairly or unfairly, that more is being expected of this president, particularly because he is black? Well, I, I think we, we may give it a little bit more attention, we in the media, but the reality is there is definitely a federal role in overseeing and investigating police departments if there are credible charges of, of, of abuse of authority or of a, a excessive force. I mean, the, 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 the Justice Department has initiated a whole bunch of investigations. One just came out on Cleveland. It's really devastating. Mm -hmm. And they've got something like 15 different consent decrees with various uh, d departments around the country, some of which predate this administration. So there's clearly a federal role. Now, if people are looking for something more than that, well, they may be a little bit disappointed, but we shouldn't underestimate the, the, the reality that there are police departments which, when they, if and when they get out of control, it is the role of the federal government to come in, mount an investigation, find out if there's a systemic problem, and uh, recommend uh, serious change. And by the way, that doesn't necessarily have to happen, especially in the case of New York, uh, but the feds will take a look and see if there's any kind of systemic problem. And, you know, that, that's really, I think, what the public wants, to know that, you know, if there's a problem or if there's an allegation of a problem, some neutral outside party with some credibility and some resources is going to take a look at it before we just kind of sweep it under the rug. Mm. And, and, Ron, you know, there have been some who try to make the comparisons of the president's involvement when Cambridge police officer and Harvard professor uh, Henry Louis Gates had their run in when the officer suspected uh, Mr. Gates of breaking into his own home. And then there became a beer summit and the president was involved. Why is this radically different as to why the president um, isn't or perhaps even shouldn't try to address it in the same manner? Well, I think one clear difference is what Errol was referring to. I mean, there's a legal process going on here. The Justice Department is investigating whether there are civil rights allegations to bring specifically in the cases of Michael Brown and Eric Garner. And those, I think, historically have been tougher uh, to get uh, to move forward than on these broader systemic um, investigations of police departments. So, you know, they are, they are in a very difficult position here where I think there's a lot of expectations among their supporters that they may act in either or both of these cases specifically uh, you know, in the cases of Mr. Brown and Mr. Gardner, and it's not clear they're going to be able to do that, uh, even if they move forward on the broader, more systemic investigation. All right, let's move on now to another pressing issue, and we're talking about Thursday's looming government shutdown. If the House and Senate and the President don't reach a budget deal by Thursday, then federal agencies might be running out of money, and here we go again. So, Errol, uh, realistic, or is this, um, you know, pipe dream? I, I wouldn't put any amount of dysfunction past uh, the current Congress, um, which has, you know, sort of, sort of underperformed mm -hmm. even the last Congress, which itself had set a record for a uh, lack of achievement. So, um, yeah, they can find them, they find their way into a blind alley, I suppose. I think, though, the, the fact that this is now um, sort of a rump session, the fact that uh, we've got a lame duck Congress, um, it's it's very possible, I think, that the Republican leadership will say. You know, we don't want this uh, to be the first thing that people pay attention to as the new Congress comes in. Mm -hmm. That they can dispose of this, that they can sort of uh, 
get beyond this, and that maybe this immigration uh, the problem that they're, they want to trump up is better handled when they have more control and a hand on the tiller. That would be my expectation and, frankly, my hope. Mm. And then, Ron, not again, not near the holiday season. I mean, this, this, yeah. it, it, I guess there would be a lot of people who would say, did Congress not learn its lesson from last time? Because citizens were very sure. upset, especially those who are federal so, workers. The, the Republican leadership is trying for a two-track solution. They want the Congress to vote to fund almost all of the government through the end of the fiscal year next September, but only fund the immigration agencies on short term through February or March of next year to give them another shot, as Errol said, when they have a bigger majority at trying to undo what the president has done through executive action. The challenge is whether there are enough conservatives who will accept splitting the issue in that way in the House. And if there are not, Frederica, uh, John Boehner is going to need votes from Democrats to get this passed. Harry Reid in the Senate has said basically he would accept this deal. It's a little less clear that Nancy Pelosi and House Democrats will. So while they probably will avoid it, uh, it is not 100% certain that they can avoid that blind alley that Errol talked about. Oh boy, tis the season, but a different ring on it those is. words. All right, Ron Brownstein, Errol Lewis, good to see both of you. It's been expressed across the country for the second straight week of pro football players speaking silently. Today, it was a member of the Cleveland Browns wearing the simple message, I can't breathe, on the back of his shirt. Our Nick Valencia is in New York. So, Nick, what are people thinking and feeling there today? Well, the demonstrations here in New York have continued throughout the weekend. So far, we've seen more intimate crowds here, uh, juxtaposed really to what we saw in Berkeley, California, where Dan Simon was. There have been largely peaceful demonstrations. Earlier today, we caught up with some uh, carol singers, they, uh, justice carolers, they call themselves, about a group of 30 people who went to Penn Station. And they had a sort of modern twist on uh, traditional Christmas carol songs. One of them was, all I want for Christmas is an indictment. Others saying uh, they're dreaming for a, a mixed Christmas. I uh, caught up with one of them in the crowd. She was actually a professional opera singer, and she said it was very important for her to come out and show her support for Eric Garner. I'm a mezzo soprano. I'm singing tomorrow night, Marriage of Figaro, so maybe they'll fire me if they see me using my voice out in the cold. <laughs> no, I'm very happy to, to take the risk. It's no risk. It's a terrible situation. And this must be very important for you. It is very important, yes. And uh, we're expecting another demonstration to happen here in Union Square in New York City at about 5 p.m. We don't know the crowd estimate, but if it's any indication from what we saw yesterday, there was well over 100 protesters uh, that marched through the streets going all the way from Grand Central Station through Times Square. They actually even flooded a Toys R Us and went straight for the uh, toy gun section and, and staged a die-in. Uh, protests there. Uh, so far we haven't seen very many demonstrators out here so far, but they say that they will be coming, they will be showing up, and they are determined uh, to keep this story out there despite the uh, frigid temperatures here in the city, Fred. All right, Nick Valencia, thanks so much. We'll be watching. Appreciate it.